Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to the Daily Dose. I'm myself, Dr. Rajesh Duba. I'm a cardiologist and your mentor for teaching general medicine for exams like me, PG, JIPMER, AIMS, and as well as PGA. So as a part of today's Daily Dose, the clinical question is as follows. So we have a 67 year old man presents to the emergency department with three days history of shortness of breath. And on examination, you palpate the radial pulse and notice that the patient has an irregular heartbeat with an overall rate of 140 beats per minute. And you request an electrocardiogram which reveals that the patient is in atrial fibrillation. So which of the following would you expect to see when assessing the JVP? The options are raised JVP with normal waveform. Second option, large V waves. Third option, cannot A. Fourth option, absent A waves. And fifth option, large A waves. Now, so this particular question is completely related to the discussion on the jugular venous pressure. First and foremost, you should remember a very important point that jugular venous pressure is the one which will tell you about the right atrial pressure. Right? So, jugular venous pressure is the one which will tell you about the right atrial pressure. Whereas, there is another important multiple choice question. What is the pressure which will determine the left atrial pressure? That is your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is the one which will decide the left atrial pressure. And how do you measure this pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? That is with the help of what is called Swan-Gans catheter. Right, with the help of Swan-Gans catheter. And the value of this particular pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is very much important in differentiating cardiogenic and as well as non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And where do you have non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema? That is in patients with the ARDS, that is acute respiratory distress syndrome, where the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure will be normal. Whereas you take in case of cardiogenic pulmonary edema, like due to left ventricular failure, there you have increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Now, now we will move on to the discussion of the JVP, which is about your clinical question there. Now, in JVP, like there are five important waves out of which like you have A, C and as well as B. These are the positive waves. Whereas your X and as well as Y, they are the negative waves. That means what do you mean by the word positive wave? The pressure in the right atria increases. What do you mean by the word negative wave? The pressure in the right atria decreases. Right. Now, let me discuss about the individual waves. So, you take the A wave. A wave is the one which occurs due to atrial contraction. Right? A wave is the one which occurs due to atrial contraction. So, when atria contract, the pressure within the right atria increases and thereby that is represented by what is called A wave. Then followed by that, like what you have is the C wave. Right? Now, what is the C wave? See, when atria contracts, the blood will enter into the ventricle. Now later, the ventricle will start contracting. When the ventricle starts contracting, the tricuspid valve, it closes. The tricuspid valve, it not only closes, it is slightly pushed into the right atria. Right? The tricuspid valve, it not only closes, it is slightly pushed or bulged into the right atria. And thereby, the pressure in the right atria again increases. And that will result in what is called C wave. So C wave is due to bulging of the cusp Right, C wave is due to bulging of the cusp into the right atrium. That is your C wave. Then you take V wave. Right, uh, sorry, you have like X wave. Now, you see why do you get this X wave is when the ventricle is contracting, what will your atria do? The atria will be relaxing. So when atria relaxes, you will have the fall in the pressure within the atria and that will result in what is called X wave. So X wave represent atrial relaxation or simultaneously the ventricle is in a phase of systole. Then when atria relaxes, what will happen? The blood will try to enter into your atria. So when the blood enters, the pressure within the atria again increases and that will result in what is called V wave. So what I want to tell you here is the V wave is due to filling of the blood into the atria. That is atrial filling or venous filling, then you take the Y wave. Now you see, 
Once the blood start entering into the atria, that is your venous filling, the pressure within the atria will try to build up. And the increased pressure within the atria will automatically open your tricuspid valve. So when the tricuspid valve is opened, the blood from the atria will gush into the ventricle. And thereby, you get Y wave. So when the blood is emptying from atria into the ventricle, what will happen to the pressure within the atria? The pressure within the atria will drop down. And that will result in Y wave. So Y wave is due to atrial emptying. So I'll repeat all the waves now. A wave is due to atrial contraction. C wave is due to bulging of the cusp into the right atria. X wave is due to right atrial relaxation. V wave is due to venous filling. Y wave is due to the atrial emptying. Right? Now, now the question is about the abnormalities of the A wave and as well as about the Y wave. Sorry, the V wave. Now, so first of all, let me discuss about the large V waves. Then I will take up the abnormalities of your A wave. So you take the V wave. What is this particular V wave? That is due to venous filling. Now, what is the clinical scenario where the V wave will be increased? See, you understand the concept. The V wave is increased means V wave is actually again venous filling. The V wave is increased. That means what? That there is an additional blood which is entering into the right atria. Right? That there is an additional blood which is entering into the right atria. Now, in which clinical scenario you will get the additional blood which will enter into the right atria? That will happen in patients with tricuspid regurgitation. So, in patients with tricuspid regurgitation, the blood from the ventricle will leak back into the atria and that will result in increase in the amplitude of your V wave. So, large V wave, you will have that in patients with TR, tricuspid regurgitation. Now, coming to the abnormalities of your A wave. So, A wave, you can have giant A wave, you can have canon A wave, you can have absent A wave. So, first of all, you take the giant A wave. Now, where will you get this particular giant A wave? The giant A wave is that, like when the atria is contracting against a resistance, like atria is contracting against the resistance from the tricuspid valve, or atria is contracting against the resistance from the right ventricle. In such clinical scenario, atria has to contract very strongly. Thereby, you get a giant A wave. Now, what are the uh, resistance the right atria feel? The right atria can feel the resistance at the level of your tricuspid valve that is in patients with tricuspid stenosis and as well as right atrial myxoma. In both of them, the tricuspid valve area is reduced. So right atria has to contract very strongly to push the blood into the right ventricle. So the right atrial pressure increases. That will result in giant A wave. Or when right atrium is contracting, right ventricle should be in a state to receive the blood. But if right ventricle is giving any resistance to right atria, again right atria has to contract very strongly, resulting in what is called giant A wave. So you will have that in patients with pulmonary stenosis and as well as pulmonary hypertension. So in pulmonary stenosis and as well as pulmonary hypertension, they will increase or these are the conditions where you have increased resistance to right ventricular filling. So that is like where you have the giant A wave. Next, you have what is called canon A wave. Canon A wave is that like the pressure within the right atria abnormally increases. That means what? Your right atrium is contracting against the closed tricuspid valve. When right atrium is contracting against the closed tricuspid valve, right atrial pressure abnormally increases and that will result in what is called the canon A wave. Now this particular canon A wave, it can happen either regularly or irregularly. Now, where will you have regular canon A wave? That is due to during junctional rhythm. Junctional rhythm is that like where the origin of impulse is from the AV node. So, in such clinical scenario, atria and ventricle will contract simultaneously. So, your atria will be contracting against the closed tricuspid valve. Then, where will you get this irregular canon A wave? So, you will have that in patients with atrioventricular dissociation with ventricular tachycardia and as well as the complete heart block. So, remember, canon A wave is seen in junctional rhythm, AV dissociation with ventricular tachycardia and third important thing is in patients with a complete heart block. And finally, absent A wave. Absent A wave, you will have that in patients with the atrial fibrillation. 
See, in atrial fibrillation, the atria is contracting nearly around 400 times per minute and on average I am telling you, right? So it is actually 200 to 400 beats per minute. So when the atria is contracting 200 to 400 times per minute, actually per minute how many times it has to contract? Only 70 times. But in atrial fibrillation it is contracting almost like 200 to 400 times per minute. So then what will happen? The atria has to contract very feebly. So it's a very feeble contraction of the atria in atrial fibrillation. So when there is a feeble contraction of the atria in atrial fibrillation, what will happen? The pressure within the atria will not build up. Right? The pressure within the atria will not build up. And thereby, that will result in what is called as absent A wave. So going back to the question here now. So in this clinical question, the patient is having the atrial fibrillation in ECG. So what is that you will have in the JVP? You will have absent A wave, right? So this is about the discussion on the JVP and as well as the abnormalities of the A wave, right? So I hope you might have liked this particular video. So please do follow us on the daily news. Thank you very much.